G'day folks, uh, it's a wet day here where I live. Frogs are croaking and the rain's coming down. So I might as well make a video in the shed, in dry, for you. I've got me rock digging tool and uh, I'm gonna head down an old road that's near my house just around the corner and look for some rocks I've seen there before. Uh, Mr. Frog is croaking away there up in the drain pipe. He loves the wet weather. Now this old road that just up here starts just up here. It's no longer used. It's a dirt track but some of the old fuel the road workers used to put in it look quite nice some of the rocks so we'll go and have a look. One there looks interesting and I don't even have to dig it out. <laughs> what I'm going to do is make two pendants and uh, make the video a tutorial at the same time on shaping and polishing. So uh, this this will be one of them I'll take home. Uh, that one there. <laughs> Although it looks nice in the rain. It will just be grey on the inside, so we'll leave that one. Right. This is what I'm looking for. It's a pyritic jerk I used to use around here for road fuel. Yeah, that's probably the bit, just the right size. All right, we'll take that home and uh, get on with it. Uh, this old road's only about 250 meters from my house. I just live 100 meters up that way and then a hundred meters around the corner. Just goes to show you can find little rocks anywhere you keep your eyes open, especially in the wet weather. Easier to see. Okay, I'm back home and I've got three rocks in my pocket. Piece of the pyritic fine grain jerk. And a, uh, another unknown rock that looks like it might have potential. It could just be the chert with a weathering on the outside. And uh, in this other pocket, a piece of string. And uh, yeah, I dare say it's the this chert, the same as that chert as that, but weathered on the outside. We'll cut them anyway, and we'll see how we go. Okay, I cut the first one and I'm pretty pleased. Some little pieces fractured off. That's the first rock. Look on the inside. In my opinion, it was the same rock, shirt, uh, but it's been affected somehow. We've got these nice, nice light greys in it. Something like that I'll take where that fracture goes through. I'll purposely cut that off and use this part for the pendant. All right, I'll try the other ones. Another interesting cut. Some banding there. see what we can do with them. On to the next one. Yeah this one I got a lot of fracturing. That one slab fractured and that one fractured. 
this piece is rough on one side but could be used depending on how this fractures I'm not sure and that's the leftover all right what we'll do now is we'll cut some blanks from the um, little pieces um, cut the basic shape of the pendant ready for um, uh, refining the shape with the sander polisher okay so we got some cuts some uh, basic shapes I'll make one pendant from each rock type um, that one's got a bit of a chip in it can be left as a feature I suppose not sure which one I'll use there this one I've got no choice just the one I'll leave the back rough as a feature and uh, this one I'll choose from either that one or this one this one's begging for to, ha to have the edge left rough and maybe the bottom because if the pendants turn around it looks good that way all right we'll move on and today we get to play with a new toy for Christmas my partner gave me the Azito 18 volt brushless sander which takes a rechargeable battery so we'll fit that on and we'll have a go I've chosen these three blanks to use this one has rough on the back this one has rough on the back this one is cut both sides now with uh, the feeling I got for this material when I was cutting it with the rigid hard disks the aluminium one, lap disks I think I'll skip to 60 grit and jump straight to a 240 no actually we'll go to a 120 first and, and see how the material reacts so we'll fit that on Uh, just to look at the uh, new polisher, it has an on off switch that always starts at zero speed and then we use our increment buttons to bring it up to speed. So I flatten the face of it and now I'll work the a bevel on the edges. Yeah, so now I've got the, I know the light's terrible in here, I've got a bevel on all edges. Um, the place where you're going to drill your hole in the top, just be careful your bevel's not too big there, or you, or you eat into the real estate that you're going to drill the hole into in the top. But anyway, that's looking good. And um, we're leaving the other sides, the other side rough. 
So we'll move on to the next two. So we're on our second piece. We've got all the edges flat. Oops. Except for the bottom one. We're gonna leave that as a feature. They look quite nice with a rough uh, edge on one side. So now we'll go, as we did the other one, we'll go to the two beveling, making a bevel all round. So we've got our first two blanks shaped better now with bevels around the edge and the face of them are, are smooth, ready for the next grip. This one with a natural edge. All right, so we've got our black one, the pyritic fine grain shirt one done with a, I hope you can see that, with a bevel all around and the face done on both sides. And you might be thinking, oh, if I do this, how do I get all the bevels even? How do I get the shape even? Don't worry about it. It's what makes the pendant looks good. Here I've got a chip. You probably can't see. The light gets it. Just leave it bevel and flatten around it. Gives it character. All right, we'll move on. Just a tip, when you see your, your discs, either the hard ones, these aluminium ones, or the soft ones, get dirtied up with a grit, get yourself a little cheapo brush and just clean them off before you put them away. Job done. So now we're going to move from the rigid aluminium discs, which is flattened and beveled for us, to the first of the polishers, which is a, a 50 grit in a flexible um, diamond impregnated sort of plastic resin disc with Velcro on the back. So we'll move on to that. Now, as I've mentioned in my other videos, this 50 grit or whichever grit you use, we're at 100 or 50, the lower grit is the one where we're gonna make sure and remove all the scratches. So work this one well in, and then the uh, following higher grits will all just be relatively quickly. All right, so we've worked the low grit, the 50 grit, all around. Just a tip, um, You'll develop your own method, but what I do is, it's a four-sided object. So I, I work the disc on the face, and then I do the edges, and I just count in my head, one, two, three, four. I've done all the edges. And then the same with the bevels. One, two, three, four. So the next stage is to dry it off well, get it very dry and take it to a brightly lit area and inspect for any scratches. All right, so we've dried it off and we brought it out in the sun and there's no major scratches on it. Just a haze from being a very low grit. So that, this one's ready to move on to the next grit. Right, so all three are polished with the 50 grit. I inspected them for scratches. It was just this last one. Now, I've only got one hand with the camera, but up on this edge in the corner that's facing us, can you see the scratches? That needs to go back for a touch up. Now the next grip I'm going to move on to, I'm going to skip the 100 from my experience with this material and go straight to a 200. But before we do that, 
while they're rough, I'm going to uh, drill the holes for where the little eyelets go in. I have an old eyelet fixed to a piece of wire, which I use to see how deep my hole is to make sure I get the hole right. And I drill them with a one millimeter diamond drill from eBay. They're, real, they're really cheap. And that's on the extension from my it's not a Dremel, but it's a uh, the same as a Dremel, a cheaper brand of a Dremel. I do that over a, cut the bottom of an old bucket with some water, and I keep the, um, the workpiece wet while I'm drilling. Now I can't video it for you with, it's impossible, not enough hands, but I'll see what I can do for you. Now the, the little drills wear out pretty fast. Um, if you're lucky, you'll get three, all three with this drill, but sometimes it's only one if it's like agate material and uh, sometimes two and if you're real lucky, three. But uh, here in Australia, they're less than $1 each, 67 cents each. Now keep on dipping your workpiece in the water and keep the drill cool for to make sure you do get your three rocks out of the life of the drill. The worst thing you can do is let this overheat. The metal will go soft and you will have undue wear on it. So keep dipping the rock and keep drilling your hole. And now and again, test out the depth of your hole with your little homemade gauge. Now that's almost deep enough. Trying to get this on camera for you is near impossible. But if you can see that, that is deep enough. So one down. Try and clear as much of the debris from inside the all the dust from in the hole. impossible yeah you can see that the hole's done on that one on to the next one that's the second one done and you can see my little homemade testing eyelet goes right to the ring so that hole's deep enough I'll pull out with my teeth because I've got no more hands for the camera and you can see the hole there and as I said just clear all the dust wash it and blow it and whatever method you can to clean it out even use your little homemade tester to clean it out and as I mentioned the uh, drills diamond drills and the eyelets are both available on eBay just search for them these are so cheap it's not funny it's like I forget what it is it's like 50 or 100 for a dollar or something so now we have all Three perspective, perspective pendants drilled. Now, this material is of a medium hardness, 
and I said the drill bits wear out fairly quick. There's hardly anywhere with a with a medium hardness material. I'd probably get another three or even more out of that same bit. When we get to that stage, we'll be gluing them in with a super glue gel. Not the runny super glue, it's too too hard to handle and runs all over your pendant, but the gel is a, is a gelified one available in the hardware shop and uh, it's a lot easier to use. Just one drop on the hole, then plunge the, the eyelet into the hole. All right, folks, so we'll carry on polishing. We're on our 200 grit now. Um, I'll be skipping a few grits because this material is only of medium hardness. I'll probably jump to from 200 to 800 and then 1500, probably 6000 and then finish with 10,000 grit. These finer grits don't need much. You're probably gonna need, a, on each surface, just a bit like that, maybe around four times in every direction, and then move on to your next surface. The finer grits don't take much at all. Folks, I started on my first pendant with the 200 grit and uh, I run out of power. So there's a, an indication of battery life. We've got to this stage. Mate, it's lunchtime anyway, so I'll go and have my lunch and put this on charge and uh, then I'll resume my polishing. All right, folks, I've worked my way through the grits and I'm ready to go on to the last grit, 10,000 grit. Uh, they're looking good so far. Um, I went through, I've been through four different grit discs and it took about 20 or 25 minutes. And this last bit will take about five minutes. And I'll see you after that. So that's all the grits work through. 10,000. The next step is one of two ways you can choose. You can either fit a Velcro um, felt buff to your polisher and you apply some auto sole metal polish or similar metal polish if you desire, you don't have to, to the just a tiny P on each one, rub it in and buff them off, or a bench grinder fitted with a stitched sisal wheel. And this is the way I'm going to do today, a lot easier. So we'll dry them off completely and uh, put a smear of metal polish on it and uh, buff them up. Now, as we're leaving our um, uh, battery charged polisher now, uh, just a bit of a review. I like it, I really like it. Nice and light, much better than the big electric one. It's only half the weight. Um, the battery power you saw, I did half the job, had a break. Uh, I've had a break for about 20 minutes and the battery was almost fully charged again and away I went again. So highly recommended for those who live in Australia. It's a Zito, um, it's 18 volt, it's brushless technology, no brushes in the motor and it's available at Bunnings. It's, yes, recommended, give it the tick. All right, so we've got our rocks. Uh, this is the one I use, Auto Soul. I think it's a worldwide brand, German metal polish. Just put a tiniest bit 
Oops, trying to get the camera. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Rub it all around. Next one. Oh, a bit too much on there. buff them off closer look in the light afterwards now the best thing you can do for yourself is lay everything out have your eyelets ready your work pieces your glue uh, test your glue see that it's actually working yes that's all ready Now, it's going to be hard to get this on the camera, but we'll have a go. We just put a dob of glue on the hole. Simple as that, and place the eyelet into the glue and the hole. Now, orientate the eyelet the right way. It needs to be same running the same way as the pendant so you can use any object I've got an old rock off cut here to try and grab any bits of excess glue off of it yeah so we have our ring running the same way as the little pendant so the eyelet can go in this way and the cord can go through it. Show you that again, the eyelet is running the same way as the pendant. Then when you ring go, your, your ring that the cord goes through, will go the opposite direction, through it, to hold the cord. A drop of glue on the hole and then push the eyelet into the dob of glue into the hole even and so that the glue grips the bottom of the eyelet as well to get a nice grip and the final one if you get some glue in the eyelet's hole don't worry about it you can use your Dremel on the same bit just to clean it out after later. Yeah, nice grip of glue. The glue grips the bottom of the eyelet nicely. Place them somewhere to dry overnight. Give them 24 hours. Now I find using an elastic cord for the pendants is practical. It looks good. Suits male female or child uh it's cheap to buy i think that was 70 cents a meter at the um um dressmaking shop or whatever they call them linen shop haberdashery shop or you can if 
you desire you can use chain or various other um, necklace material now, I won't go too much into fitting the cord it, uh, but basically I put a ring on the eyelet there uh, in this case I've done a bit of fancy work but usually I don't and just fasten the cord with a knot at the end so you cut your cords to length I have a marker on my bench from the end of the bench to there is my I know what to cut uh, get the jump rings ready these are I think they're three four millimeter jump rings three cents each so they're cheap enough at the um, either on eBay or at the um, cheap shop prepare your jump rings open them up using the little miniature pliers I use jump rings fitted thread your cord through tie your knot on the other end trim it nice and neat and there's your finished pendant nice job Now you can uh, play around with your cords and do all kinds of stuff. But I'll show you a really basic one. Tie your knot first. Stretch it out. Then tie a knot here. As such. So your knot's there. Thread your remaining little loop through your eyelet. Thread the rest of the cord through the little loop and you'll have a decorative knot and miniature loop down by the pendant. And you can get creative. In this one I've done two knots. So there you go folks. Hope you got something out of that and I, I urge you to have a go. So that's that folks, thanks for watching the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to. There's plenty more rocks, fossils, gems, minerals, lapidary, everything there for you. Thanks.